What's up everybody? Today I'll be walking you through the best three beginner projects everyone should try. The first project we're going to be making is the number guessing game. This is a very simple game and all we're going to do to get started is to import the random library up into the top. So we're going to import random and then we're going to come down here and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to ask the user to input whatever the top range and the number that we're going to be generating. So if the user inputs 10 then we're going to generate one th numbers 1 through 10. If he puts 100, we're going to generate numbers 1 through 100, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable, and we're going to call it top range. And we're going to set it equal to the input. And then what we're going to do is we're going to prompt the user with enter the top range for the number. And then since this is an input, it returns a string. So even if the, if the user inputs 10 right here, it's going to be saved as 10. But since it's um, as a string right now, we want to convert it into an integer. So we want to make it like that. So all we got to do is just wrap this input with the int conversion. Now, after we've gone to top range, what we're going to do next is we're going to generate that random number. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable, and we're going to call it number, and we're going to set it equal to the random number. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap into the random library, so random dot, and then we're going to generate a random integer, so rand int. We want the range to be from 1 to the top range, and since um, for the random integer, anything in the random library, whatever the second parameter is, so in this case, top range is the second parameter within this, it is not included, right? So if we enter 10 as the top range, this number variable can only be one through nine. It's not gonna include 10. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say top range plus one so that we can include, be inclusive of the top range number that the user inputs. Okay, hope that makes sense to you guys. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another variable and we're gonna call it running and we're gonna initialize it to true. We're doing this so that we can generate a while loop and we can just say while running. And this is good because now the user can just keep on guessing until he gets the correct answer. And once he gets the correct answer, we can just break out of this while loop. So now what we gotta do is have the user guess what the number is. So let's create a variable and call it guess. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the top range variable. And we're gonna set it equal to the int conversion of the input string. And the input is gonna be guess the number. Okay, so now, what are the three conditions that are going to happen when the user guesses the number? He's either going to guess the correct number, and in that case he wins, and we should break out the loop, or he's going to guess a number that's less than the number, or too high, or higher than the number. So then what we're going to do there is we're just going to prompt the user by telling him that he guessed too high, he guessed too low. You get what I'm saying? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the guess equals the number and what we can do is we can say print you guessed the number, something like that. And then what we can do is set running equal to false. And then we can just break out of this loop. Otherwise, elif the guess was less than the number, print too low, and then otherwise the guess would be too high. So we're gonna say else print too high. Okay, and that's pretty much all we have to do for the random number generator. So let's go ahead and let's run this project. What's the top range? Let's just say 10. Now let's guess the number, let's guess five, too high. So let's guess three too high, let's guess one, too low, so the number is gonna be two. You guessed the number correctly. Let's run it one more time, just to double check. Enter the top range for the number, let's do 100. Enter the number. There we go, we guessed the number, you guys get it. Pretty simple. Okay, let's hop into the next project. The next little project that we're gonna be creating is a password generator. Generator. You know the websites, they suggest you password all the time. There is a bunch of random characters together. That's pretty much what we're gonna be creating today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create this all in the same file, but just so that whenever we run it, we don't see the while loop run and stuff. I'm just gonna come up here and I'm going to comment out 
all this code, but I'm gonna keep that random statement imported because we're gonna need it for this next project. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna define a function and I'm gonna define it password generator. Okay, and then in this password generator, I'm gonna pass in one parameter and I'm gonna pass in length. And this is gonna represent how long we want our password to be, right? Because sometimes we're gonna be want shorter passwords, sometimes we're gonna want longer passwords. Okay, so how are we gonna accomplish this problem? So what I was thinking about doing was creating one string and I'm gonna call it chars and I'm gonna set it equal and I'm just gonna put in all of the characters that I would want in my password, okay? So I'm gonna want all the letters, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z, okay? So those are all the lowercase letters. I'm also going to put in all the uppercase letters. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay. Now after I have all those uppercase characters, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in some of the special characters. So I'm going to go up to the top and I'm just going to run my hand across all of the number keys in the top. Exclamation part, at sign, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So we got all of those characters right here. And now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a password variable. And that's going to be initialized to an empty string. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to generate and add characters to this password um, variable up to whatever length we pass in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a for loop. I'm going to say for, and what we can say is we can say for every element in range of length. Actually, since we're not actually not going to have to do anything with each, um, we're just, we just want to loop length amount of times to create the password of the length that we want. We don't actually have to do, put a variable name here. What you can actually do is put an underscore there, and that's best practice for programming because you're not allocating any memory towards um, whatever the element variable that we just created there or whatever variable that you're going to be creating in place of this underscore. But since we're not going to be doing anything with each number in this range we can just put an underscore there because that's just the way it works so now what we're going to do is we want to add a random character from this string right here so what i'm going to do is we can say password plus equal and then we want to access some index within this chars string so i'm going to say plus equal chars bracket and now we have to generate a random number within the index values of this chars string. So what we can do is we can tap back into that random library, random dot rand int, and it's gonna be in the range of zero, because that's the first index we're gonna be talking about, to the length of chars. And then what we can do is we can just exit out of this for loop, and then we can just return password. All right, so let's test this out a little bit. Let's come down here and I'm gonna make um, P1 and we're gonna set it equal to password generator 10. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna print P1. And we're also gonna print the length of P1 to double check to see if it generated one of five, 10 units. And then we're gonna make P2 and we're gonna set it equal to password generator. And then this time we're gonna pass in 100. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing as above. We're gonna print P2 and also to print the length of it. It's good practice to um, test your code like that. So if I go ahead and I run this code right here, I'm actually gonna be getting an error and it's gonna be an index error string out of range. And it's this good thing that we test our code here by having a generating a number one through 100, making a very big password because it exposed this error that we wouldn't have saw if we just went and ran it a, a password of 10 characters. And what we saw is this index out of range error, meaning that we're generating an index that is bigger than this char string, right? So you can't access an index that isn't uh, greater than the length of the string here. So what we have to do is come down here and just subtract one as you know, because the length of chars is going to actually be one greater than the last index because the indexes start from zero and the length would not start from zero. So if the if you have this A is at index zero, but when you're calculating the length, this would just be one, two, three, four, if you get what I'm saying. Okay, so we got to put that minus one there for it to work 100% of the time.
All right, now it's a password generator. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment all of this out again, and we're gonna move on to our last project. All right, our last project is actually gonna be an English to gibberish translator. So if you guys don't know what gibberish is, it's that weird little language, I don't know how to speak it really, where they add like a dig after every vowel. There's like a bunch of different like dialects of gibberish around the world. People speak it in different ways, but it's just like a made up language, right? But I created this program because a couple kids in my school were talking in gibberish and they thought they were like cool because nobody could understand them. So then I just made a program that could translate what they said and then they weren't so cool anymore. But the way we're gonna do it is actually super simple and we're gonna import a really cool library that actually has a lot of text to speech features so you can have it speak out the program, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna import that audio library that I was talking about. And the one that we're gonna be using today is called PyTTSX3. If you guys do not have this library already, all you gotta do is come over here open up your terminal be there um, I'm just gonna clear this and all you got to do is say pip in install and then type in pi tt sx3 um, but since I already have it it should say requirements already satisfied it downloaded something whatever but I already have the library okay so let's come down here and let's define a function I'm just gonna call it two gibberish and what I'm going to do here is then you can I'm going to pass in a parameter. I'm just going to call it input because we want to import some sort of string that we want to change into gibberish. Okay, so similar to how we initialized the password variable before, I'm going to initialize a gibberish variable to an empty string. Okay, and the way gibberish works, like I said before, is you're going to be adding a dig after each vowel in the word. Okay, so I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call it vowels, and I'm just going to set it equal to the string of A, E, I, O, and U. Okay, the vowels. So now what we're gonna do is we need to loop through each letter in the input. So what we're gonna do is we can just say for every letter in input. And now we gotta do is check to see if the letter that we're on is a vowel. So what we can do is say if letter in vowels, then we're gonna add a dig to that gibberish thing. Gibberish plus equal a dig, okay? And then um, if it's not, we're still gonna be adding the letter to whatever the gibberish is. So we're gonna say gibberish plus equal letter. And then all we gotta do is just come out of here and return the gibberish. That's perfect. So let's go ahead down here and we can just test it. So we can just print out two gibberish and then we can pass in Hello. Now if I run this, hit a go, hit a go. You add the a dig um, after each, um, uh, b before each variable. So you go H E, that's a variable or a vowel right there. So you're gonna be adding a dig and then you're gonna be adding a dig after each vowel. So it works out well, okay? So we can go ahead and comment out this line again and come down. Now let's actually incorporate that text to speech feature. So as I did before, I'm gonna create, a, I'm gonna initialize running to true. And then what we can do is, I'm just gonna say, uh, I'm gonna print out press Q to quit, just so the user knows how to get out of the program. Um, and that's gonna be how we escape from the while loop. So now we can just say while we're running, we can, now we're gonna have to accept some sort of input from the user. So we're gonna say, I'm just gonna call it imp. I'm gonna set it equal to the input. But since we are actually wanting strings now, we don't have to convert it to an integer. So we can just say, enter the word you wish to translate. And now what we can do is we can convert this word to gibberish. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna check to see if the input is equal to that Q then we want to get out of this loop. So I'm going to say running equal to false, and then break. Okay? But otherwise, what we're going to do is we want to actually speak this program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. And for the um, this pi, this audio library, we got to do a little bit of setup before we can actually start saying stuff. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it audio. And this is going to be equal to the pi 
TTS x3, and then we have to initialize this variable, okay? Init, so dot init. And then after we do this is we're gonna actually gather whatever word, the gibberish word. So I'm gonna create a variable, I'm gonna call it gibberish, and I'm gonna set it equal to two gibberish, and then you pass in that input. And then now all we gotta do is just say it. So what we can do is say audio dot say, and then we're gonna pass in gibberish. And then we're gonna come down here and we just gonna say audio dot run and wait. And that's all we got to do. So I'm going to hit save there. I'm going to hit run. Enter the word you wish to translate. Hello. Oh, if I don't have any volume on my computer. I'm going to type in hello again. The jelly bell. Hope you guys heard that well. Um, let's try another word. Um, Python. Pythagon. Pythagon. Um, another word. Tilda Jack. So as you guys see, this is working perfectly. Um, and that's going to be all the projects that we're doing today. If you guys enjoyed, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Like and subscribe.